Amen, amen. I'd like to say um, good evening to everyone. Uh, good evening to this Wednesday night Bible study. As we continue, um, as we continue in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verses 1 through 4, and as we were going through last week, um, we were going through the verses of children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. To honor your father and, mo and mother, this is the first commandment with a promise that it may go well with you, that you may live long in the land. In verse four, fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Um, so I pray that everyone um, enjoyed last week. Uh, we'll continue on in the next verses. Um, I'm not sure if we're going to finish it or not, but we'll see how the participation goes and continue on. And I hope that and pray that everyone had a great week as we move forward. All right. I'm going to start in prayer, uh, but I feel led to go with um, praying for pastors. I know it's been a it's been a crazy week. I I saw that um, there was a pastor in Australia. Um, matter of fact, Elder Kenny, um, you played a short clip, a video of him on one of our uh, Wednesday night Bible studies. Um, and he uh, ended up getting stabbed over in Australia. Um, he wasn't one of the ones that were in the mall. This, he was in service when someone um, someone ran up, a young kid ran up on him and uh, stabbed him. Um, so I want to pray for him and pray for our pastors and leaders. Amen. Uh, I'm going to be praying in the scriptures. Um, let me see. See if you can see this screen. I'm not sure if you can see the praying for our pastors screen. You, everyone can see that? Yes, we can. Okay. Heavenly Father, almighty King Jesus, in thy mighty, wonderful, holy, precious name, dear Lord, we come before you, dear Lord, and I ask for forgiveness of any sins, dear Lord, that I may have done, dear Lord, and I ask for forgiveness of all, the, all of them, dear Lord, that my prayer is not hindered before you, dear Lord. And Father Christ, dear Lord, I want to lift up the pastors, dear Lord, on this evening, dear Lord, and I want to pray, Heavenly Father, for the churches, dear Lord. I understand that the FBI put out a warning um, for churches um, to be aware of the situations around them, dear Lord. So I pray, Heavenly Father, for your blessings over the churches. I would pray for Bishop um, Mar Mari, dear Lord. I pray you strengthen him, dear Lord, and that uh, he recover, Heavenly Father, um, from his injuries, dear Lord. And any other uh, pastor or leader, dear, dear Lord, or missionary, uh, those that are out on the streets, in, in different countries, um, just preaching the word, dear Lord, and being attacked because they are preaching the word, Heavenly Father. And Father, dear Lord, I pray these scriptures, dear Lord, uh, for our pastors and, and all pastors around the world. Father, I thank you that our pastors are faithful and that you preserve them, that they abound with blessings and do not grow weary in well-doing that you who began a good work in them will perfect it. They are your workmanship created in Christ Jesus and equipped in every good thing to do your will. Work in them that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Let all grace abound toward them, having sufficiency in all things and an abundance for every good work because they have so bountifully they will reap bountifully, and whether they plant or water, Father, you give the increase. I pray that they continually triumph in Christ, diffusing the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. 
that all blessings come upon them and overtake them because they obey the voice of their God. Instruct them and teach them in the way they should go. Reveal the deeper things of God to them by your spirit. Let them be vessels of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work, sheep herding the flock, willingly, eagerly, and being an example to them. Their, spe their speech and preaching is a demonstration of the spirit and power, and they are instant in season and out of season to preach the word. Every place the, uh, the soles of their feet tread upon has been given to them. They are strong and of good courage for you. Lord, go with them. They wait on you and you strengthen them in their heart. Help them set in order things that are lacking and appoint elders in every city. I tear down the strongholds over the pulpit. I lift up our pastors and cover them with the blood of Jesus. Sickness and disease shall in no way come near them, for they are redeemed from the curse of the law. I say that no weapon formed against them will prosper, and every tongue rising against them shall be shown to be in the wrong. Father, let the gifts and anointings of their lives come forth. Birth the things that you have spoken to them in their hearts as they continually give themselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. Amen. Now, Heavenly Father, dear Lord, again, we thank you, Father Christ, dear Lord. We thank you for Psalms 91. We thank you for Psalms 23. And every verse, dear Lord, in the gospel, in your Bible, dear Lord, that covers and protects our pastors, dear Lord, our children, Heavenly Father. Lord, I pray that you keep them and bless them, dear Lord. I pray that you uh, cover every step that they take, dear Lord. Every area, avenue, um, city, or state, or country, dear Lord. Wherever they go, Heavenly Father, I pray that you cover all our pastors. Cover them in the stores. Cover them in the workplace. Cover them when they're at home, dear Lord. Cover them when, when they're in service. Cover them in the temples. Cover them in the churches, church buildings, dear Lord. But, uh, Father, I pray that you keep them and cover them, dead Lord. I pray all your blessings upon them, dead Lord. And for the body of Christ around the world, dead Lord, I lift them up to you, dead Lord. Those Christians in the Middle East, Heavenly Father, I pray you strengthen them, dead Lord, as you cover and keep them, Heavenly Father, in these days, dead Lord. I thank you, Father Christ, for your bright light that continues to shine on us and through us, dead Lord, that others may come to know your word and come to be saved, dead Lord, by the power of your of your gospel for what you did on the cross, Heavenly Father. I thank you in your mighty, wonderful, holy, precious name, King Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Again, I want to say uh, good evening um, to everyone for this Wednesday night Bible st uh, study. And uh, again, last week, we were dealing with the children. And one of the things that we discussed that believing children and parents are to walk under God's authority. That's children and the parents. And they are to obey. And who are they to obey? They are to obey in the Lord, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to continue on through, and we did uh, discuss last week about Mark 9 and, and showing that all um, believing saints are children, and they are little children, and we are to respect and honor everyone under God's uh, protection. Uh, that's one of the things I wanted to point out um, from last week. And uh, we also talked about the abusing parent. Uh, one of the things that he must heed is not to touch God's child. Um, that they must proclaim the word of God and the children ought to obey their parents. Only if the parents desire instructions are in the Lord. Are in the Lord. 
And then we continue on down. I think it's um, point B in your packet where we'll be starting with second uh, to obey your parents. Everyone have that? I think we all should, should have that. Amen. All right, second. Amen. Um, to obey parents mean to honor one's father and mother. The word honor means to esteem and value as precious. Uh, the Amplified New Testament show respect and reverence says to show respect and reverence, kindness, courtesy, and obedience. Scripture is not speaking to any certain age child. It is speaking to all of us who are children with parents still living. We are to follow, we are to honor our fathers and mothers to esteem and value, value them as precious, to respect and reverence them. Tragically, this is a rarity today. Too often, a child's response to his parents is that of talking back. Uh, this second one, I'm not sure about the second one. I would hope <laughs> I would hope that a child is not cutting his parents. Um, so I wasn't quite sure about that one. But I hope that's not exactly what it means. Um, not saying that it's never been done. We know it's been done, but I hope that's <laughs> I hope a child is not cutting his parents. Um, ignoring, grumbling, disregarding the instruction, putting off the instruction, speaking disre uh, disrespectfully, not listening, acting like a you know it all, calling the parent a cute but disrespectful name. I, I think we've all uh, known that the children have may have dabbled in some of those, except for that cutting the cutting the parent part. <laughs> um, in addition to these, there is the dishonor of delinquency, crime, drugs, alcohol, and the abuse of property, and the list could go on and on. And when it comes to to adult children with aged parents, there is the dishonor of neglect, the ignoring of their needs and the shuffling of them to the side and failing to adequate, adequately care for them. Too many adult children forget how much their parents have done for them, bringing them into the world and taking care of them for years. Too many children forget the rich experience and knowledge that the parents have gained through the years and that could be put to great use in meeting community and world needs. And even if the parents fail to be and to do all they should have, we as Christian children are instructed to honor them as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I know um, um, it's got me thinking when me and my wife went to Jamaica and they were taking us through uh, Jamaica uh, to the waterfalls, they were showing us the, the town, uh, the homes that they had built, the parents had built these homes. And then when they get to a certain age, I'm guessing in their late fifties or sixties, they build a little small type home right next to the home. And when they get a certain age, the parents move into the smaller home and the children move into the bigger home, but the children take care of their parents and they just take over the whole function of the uh, household. And I thought that was, you know, great to hear um, when she told us that because it's not, we know it's not something that we do here. Uh, we do it differently, but it was uh, great to hear that. That was something that I picked up um, from the woman that was discussing about Jamaica. Um, it, it was a blessing. Um, the scriptures of e uh, Ephesians 6.1, which we are reading, children, Obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. But if any widow have children or nephews, let them learn first to show piety at home and to requite, repay, pay back to their parents. For that is good and acceptable before God. But if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, he have denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5, 4 and 8. 
whoso curses his father or his mother, his lamp shall be put out in obscure dark uh, darkness. Proverbs 20 and 20. The eye that mocketh at his father and despises to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall, <laughs> shall pick it out and the young eagles shall eat, eat it. Um, I'm not sure if that was supposed to be the eyes there. Yeah, that's what I think. I'm like, it's, it's missing something, but I think that was supposed to be the eyes there. Um, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Exodus 20 and 12. Uh, you shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my Sabbath. I am the Lord your God. Leviticus 19 and 3. Thou shalt rise up before the hoary head and honor the face of the old man and fear thy God. I am the Lord. Leviticus 19 and 32. Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. When I looked at that, I wasn't quite sure what it was saying about set of light. Um, and I come to, to read that in the CSB version, which says the one who dishonors his father or mother is cursed. And all the people will say, amen. So any comments on these scriptures? Uh, do we see how um, these scriptures, uh, especially the first Three, well, the first four, yeah, the first three or four scriptures. Um, God was making a point, a strong point, about honoring our parents, honoring, um, you know, children of, of, of the household. Uh, so those scriptures are 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 straightforward. <laughs> we are not to dishonor our parents. Um, and, and you can see how the world is reacting today. We see how the children act. Um, if they only knew the word of God, they would not treat their parents the way they um, treated them. Uh, parents nowadays are, are doing things they shouldn't do, and children are doing um, things they shouldn't do. Uh, any comments on anything that we have read so far? Yes, Sister Ricky. Um, I see Sister Diane put in cutting can also mean using cutting words, which could harm or or use hateful terms. That's what she she made a comment about the cutting children cutting their parents. Yeah, using they can't hateful cut words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I was thinking of like when they like cutting up, just acting up. Um, but a couple notes that I had made um, when they was talking about respecting your parents and especially when they're still living you know, of a child of whatever age, I um, was thinking about even our spiritual parents, we have to keep in mind that these rules apply to that as well. Mm -hmm. And when it was going to the list of the responses of the kids, when it came to the part that said disregarding instructions and put in off instructions. Um, in my head, I heard overseer's voice say big time. <laughs> like <laughs> disregarding instructions and putting off instructions. So I was like, okay. And um, the, the one with the eye, I looked that up in like six different versions. Like it's got to be another way. What's this? <laughs> what's the saying but what i took out of it is that there's consequences yes when yes. you uh mocking your father and despising your mom there is consequences to those actions and uh the set of light in the last verse um like you said dishonors or treat with contempt is what i got out of those verses amen amen elder kenny Amen. I just wanted to say um, uh, uh, Exodus 20 and 12 reminds me of one of my old bosses. Um, his father and mother were pastors and he would always uh, talk about uh, he had to go to a service or he had to go to a dinner or he had to go over to be with them. 
Um, but he didn't live what we would consider what we would call a godly life per se. But I always equated the blessings that was on his life attributed to how he treated and honored his mother and father. I always mm -hmm. thought about that, that because he always talked about, I have to go, I have to do this. I got to make sure the grass is cut. I got to uh, run over to the church. They're having problems with the computers or whatever it may be. And he's always been blessed. And he always has told me, you know, when we work together personally, how he was blessed and how he was being blessed. And when I came across this scripture many, many years ago, working with him, that's what I attributed it to, that how he honored and respect his current. He understood that and was taught that at a young age and even in his 40s and 50s, yet he still was honoring and respecting his parents. And God was making his days long and not only making his days long, but blessing him and prospering him because he's honoring his mother and father. He learned that at an early age. I just wanted to share that. I think that is a very good scripture. And I think that's a lot of what our problems are in the world today. Our kids have gotten how to honor and love uh, and treat their parents. Um, and sometimes some parents may deserve it, but even if they don't deserve it, we have been taught that we still honor and still love and appreciate them. Amen. 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 And, and if I can add to that, I would say with Overseer, um, I would say that there were times that I would think that Overseer honored his congregation, but they didn't always honor him back. And we've seen him do so many great things and didn't get the return um, of that honor, due honor um, he didn't get. And also, um, he was the first father figure for me, as Elder Kenny, I know you know also, he was the first uh, father figure for me. So, it was so that was the reason why I honored him because his walk um, and his, his respect for others. Um, so that's why I greatly honored him because he was uh, also, he was a man of God, but also he was a, he was a father. He was a, a husband and he was a father to many men um, in the church. Uh, he was a blessing to us all. Amen. Uh, note the two promises made to children who honor their parents. Things will go well for the child. Does this mean that the child will never have problems or have to suffer? No, this is not what the scripture means. God means that he will be with the child, strengthen and take care of him so that he can walk through the trials of life victoriously. The child will be strengthened and made strong where it counts, in the, in the inner man. He will be enabled to conquer and to be victorious over whatever confronts him as he journeys through life. The child is assured that he will live a long life on earth. Frankly, there is little question but that Paul meant this and that we should take it for what it says. If a child honestly obeys and honors his parents faithfully, really obeys and honors uh, from the depths of his heart, God will give him a long life on earth. If there's ever an exception to this, and what about small babies and children who are taken on to heaven? Does this violate the promise? No. If a child was really obedient, then all we can say is that God knows what is best. And for some reason, God wanted the precious little life with him now. God just could not wait for the fellowship and joy which this precious little life would bring him. We don't know why, you know, some children go before others, um, but we know that God knows. And uh, I put my trust in him. And when people question, you know, God exists, then why this happened and why that happened? I can't give you all the answers, but I know God knows the answers. And I, I just put my trust in him and then and go from there. But we know that God has got all of us and he knows our footsteps. He, he knows, um, you know, how we are to walk. And, he, you know, he, we count all joy on him. And we don't worry about, you know, all the things that other people get caught up on. But we just thank God for him. Um, number two. Is two on my packet anyway. 
parents and children. Parents are not to provoke their children to wrath. Parents are bound to upset and irritate their children sometimes. We all upset and irritate people sometimes. Discipline, correction, and reproof are seldom enjoyable experiences. Their very nature is that of dis disturbance and irritation. This is not what this instruction means. The word provoke means to arouse, to arouse to wrath or anger, to provoke to the point of utter exasperation and resentment. Note two significant discussions. Four things will provoke a child. A, failure, failing to accept the fact that these things do change. Time and generations do change. This does not mean that a child should participate nor be allowed to do everything that his generation does. But it does mean that parents need to be alert to the changes between generations and allow the child to be part of his own generation instead of trying to conform the child to the parent's childhood generation. The parent's childhood generation does not exist, nor will it ever exist again. I'm going to stop right there. <laughs> How does everyone feel about that, that paragraph? Because I know that paragraph hit me. Um, there are some things about my, you know, about my generation. Um, I, I felt that it was a little bit, you know, it was a little bit more safer in my generation. There were less things. Sundays was quiet. I remember uh, there was no stores open. Um, there were certain things that I do enjoy of my generation, but then certain things I know will never be the same. We have a Walmarts, we have the Targets, we have 24 hour Amazon that you can buy stuff. Um, the TV used to shut off at, at midnight um, in my generation, that no longer happens. Uh, any other comments on that, that paragraph? Yes, Brother Lou. Uh, the uh, things I remember about for me was, uh, my father being strict and, uh, how I used to get my butt whooped and, uh, and I did it with my kids, uh, to a certain extent, you know, my, my oldest and my middle, my, my youngest baby, she, all I had to do was look at her and she just, you know, okay. You know, she didn't, no lip, no nothing. But I, I like now. Uh, kids, if you look at them cross-eyed, they, you know, they want to call the cops or they want to, you know, I, I, you know, I'm going to report you to, you know, so-and-so or, you know, and, and it's, it, it, it's, it's a shame because that, those, the strictness, the values that we held just a short time ago have really gone out the window and it's a shame uh you know so i i those are the things i remember you know uh that i wish those things didn't change those little things i know generations change but like things like that the respect the uh you know being able to discipline your child without you know mm -hmm. them saying you know ah you know i'm gonna call this person i'm gonna call i'm gonna report you you know, and then parents, they just, they back off and, and then they, you know, we have a lot of what we have today. That's just my, from my past and what I, things that I miss and that, uh, that, uh, you know, that's what that brings me back to. That's a good point um, about, you know, about the discipline, um, you know, parent discipline in their children is completely different. Uh, today than it was, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. Um, you know, I, I I remember, you know, the paddles. <laughs> you know, I, I remember um, going out. Grandmother had me go out and get those um, uh, uh, twigs, whatever. You pull the leaves off and, and they twine them things up and you hear that sound. When you heard that sound, you started crying before you even got hit. <laughs> Uh, but today you might have the cops, you know, uh, get called on you if you outside, you know, beating your child. 
um, discipline, you know, your child, I should say. Um, but, you know, it's, it's different. It's different. Any other comments? I guess I could share uh, a story on discipline. Uh, I grew up in a single family house. So it was my mom in control and she had it pretty much under control. She ran things, you know, she disciplined us. And I never forget, I was doing something, got in trouble, and uh, she had this little plastic belt uh, that she would whip us with. If we knew we were going to get hit with that belt, we'd, we'd uh, push her to her limit. So if so I had got whipped and I went to church, I mean, went to school, and the principal called my mom and Ted said, you need to come to the school. And she said, and the teach, principal said, I'd never forget it. She's, uh, he said that your son got some whoops on his leg. And he said that I got him from a spanking. And she said, oh, yes, I, I spanked him for not being obedient to his mother. And I will spank him again if he go out here and do something that was disrespectful and dishonoring my home. So if you need to call the police, you might as well go ahead and call them because I'm going to beat him again if he get out of line. And I said mm -hmm. all this is that I remember when we had to go to Dyfus or something <laughs> with one of my kids. And the overseer happened to be sitting in on the meeting. And you can imagine overseer saying mm. he she uh she deserved it. And the parents disciplined their child. And they probably would have, they probably would go if no, he said, if it was me, I would go to jail because I'll beat them again. And I said, it reminded me of my mom. And that's how you know discipline is so necessary today. And you see kids that are not getting that discipline. And that's why they are, you know, running a mock today, because there is no discipline. No one has taught them how to be obedient, listen, the consequences of doing things wrong. You know, I, at a young age, I knew if I did this, I was going to get a spanking, you know, and single mother made sure that she was in control. I'm just going to put that out there. I never forget that. And I love her for it, because that helped me and my sister in the long run. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Ricky. So that all made me think about um, my mom too. At a at a certain time, was a single parent, and she said that she had to be in control of us, like make us afraid. In essence, not like we thought she was going to do real harm to us, but just her authority. We had to respect her authority because she was responsible for these, for the kids. Like I couldn't, and she was younger. Um, let's mm. say by 27, she had been married and had three kids. So we had to listen. <laughs> and she's like, there was no way I was going to let the three of you overrun me. So you just had, you had to listen. We didn't have a choice. Now, I, I tried my best not to be in trouble, like to listen because I don't like the consequences. I have a, a one of my brothers, he don't care about the consequences. So he did what he wanted to do. And then my youngest brother was the baby. So you know they don't get no consequences. But <laughs> <laughs> um in turn, I think my niece felt like she was over disciplined, like she was hard from my brother, because my dad was hard. Our dad was hard. And so then she's far less hard with her children. Like, mm. you know, as it goes down, some kids feel like, oh, I'm not going to engage in that behavior or whatever with my kids because so-and-so, but then you have to fuss more. You have to repeat yourself more, different things. And everything has boundaries. I'm not saying to that you need to abuse your kids or anything like that, right. but they have to learn early to like this scripture is saying to respect and honor your parents and keep that because those kids that don't get that discipline, then they're not going to be able to pass that on to their children. And it, the cycle will just continue. And we like already been said, just a few generations out, kids are running all over the place. Where's their parents? The parents sometimes is out there with them. Yes. So, That's a very good point, uh, Sister Ricky. And uh, you had me thinking, um, you know, as you were talking about from generation to generation, is that the kids must line up, you know, the parents must teach a child um, the word of God, because we know from generation to generation, the word of God 
as always healed, always worked, um, as always saved, um, as, and, and the word of God works from generation to generation. Um, the problem is when the parents uh, fall away from church or not as active in church, and then that child becomes less active, you're raising that child up um, without the word, and then every generation gets less and less word. So now that child is trying to navigate his life without the word of God. And then when the, the parent, when the child does something wrong and the parent tries to discipline him, the child doesn't understand um, because he doesn't know the word of God. He doesn't honor authority and he doesn't honor God. Um, so he, he tends to rebel and, and go his own, own way. Um, no man can go from war to war to war without taking his weapons, without taking his, you know, all the weapons that he needs, the shields, the, you know, the, um, the armor, you got to take it with you every single war. If you leave it behind, you tend to get hurt. And, and when a parent leaves behind the word of God, um, their children end up paying, uh, paying for it. Uh, a lot of times, you know, unless, you know, they, they come back. But that's the importance of from generation to generation. That word has to follow every single generation in order for it to be effective. The child must hear the word of God. Uh, we can't raise up our children without the word of God. We might not always do the same exact things as our parents did, um, but the word is the word and, and it doesn't change. And um, that's why I think the loss uh, has caused and and also the fathers um, not being in the household um, is a huge part of that also. Um, mothers are, are great. Um, my mother did the best that she could with three hard head boys. <laughs> um, but I thank God that she took us to church. And when we did fall off, the one thing I always remember was Christ. Uh, no matter what was going on, the wrongs that I did, um, it kept leading me back to Christ. And I thank my mother for taking me to church, even though I didn't want to go, but I thank her for taking me to church and, and, and blessing me with the, with the word of God. Amen. Uh, any other comments? I think we're good. Okay, we're going to continue on. Uh, what changes should and should not be allowed by a Christian parent. I know we discussed some of that. Three words provide a good guideline. Rebellion, immorality, and injustice. Open defiance or resistance to authority and immorality and injustice are contrary to God's word. Any change that involves rebellion, immorality, or injustice needs to be dealt with and controlled by the parent. We are probably, before I go on, I, I know uh, Sister Ricky had, had brought up um, when a parent, you know, uh, beats their child and that child remembers that, uh, they might not be willing to beat their child um, or discipline, I shouldn't say beat, but discipline their child as much. Um, and then you, sometimes you can lose that control but as it says there, uh, they got to be dealt with and controlled by the parent, uh, regardless of how their lives went. We are prob probably safe to say that any change not involving one of, one of these areas should be allowed. Whether true or not, these three areas provide a good practical guideline. The point is this, a parent must not resist normal and natural change that takes place between generations. If he resists and forbids his child to grow up in his own generation, the parent is asking for trouble. Most likely the child will be provoked to wrath to, and to react. Um, and that reminds me of a, of a parent um, that used to be at my job before he retired. And he was real strict with his son. And when his son got of age of 17, he started running away and, um, you know, he found him in Camden. You know, the child didn't grow up in Camden. He grew up in a nice neighborhood. Um, but because he said he was so strict with his child, 
And either, I guess he didn't allow his child to um, have some kind of freedom. Um, as soon as he got of age, the child started, you know, uh, running away. Uh, so we do have to be careful. B. Uh, over controlling a child will also provoke a child to wrath. Over control ranges all the way from stern restriction and discipline to child abuse, dealt with above in footnote 2.1. Uh, disciplining and restricting a child too much will either stifle the growth of a child or stir him to react and rebel, causing the child to flee from the parent. What is too much discipline? How much should a child be restricted? Should he be allowed to do everything he wants? No. There is a limit. And the limit must be placed upon the child and discipline must be exercised when the limit is crossed over. What Christian parents need to remember is this. Some parents allow their children to participate in every function and activity offered to the child. They are usually the ones without proper parental guidance. The point is this, there must be a balance between family life and the child's community life. The child should be allowed to do his own thing sometime and should be required to share with the family at other times. As he grows older, he should, of course, be allowed to break away from the family more and more in order to prepare him for the day when he will step out in the world on his own. A child needs free time away from the parent and family as well as some family time in order to grow into a healthy person. I know when my grandson uh, sons came over and they would spend the weekends they finally got to a point where they wanted to walk around my neighborhood. And I got a nice neighborhood, um, but still, you know, they, they are my grandchildren. And um, I just didn't want to let them walk around by themselves. But eventually I had to, you know, let them go, let them have their, their freedom. But there is that pull from a parent, you know, or a grandparent to, uh, you know, to hold on a little tight. You know, these are young children. And, Honestly, the days that we live in, um, you know, makes them, you know, as a parent can make it a little harder and for grandparents can make it even harder because we know how we grew up and then we notice the news, we see the things that's going on and we might be more aware of the the daily news, our surroundings than the, the younger generation. So when it comes to grandchildren, we tend to be a little... Um, tight when it when it comes to them amen uh ephesians 6 and 4 says and ye fathers provoke not your children to wrath but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the lord uh colossians 3 21 fathers pro provoke not your children to anger lest they be um discouraged amen so we got to be careful how we treat uh the children um I know it's hard sometimes to let go, but we do have to let them have some kind of freedom and uh, and let them, you know, uh, do the things that they want to do as long as, as it doesn't dishonor um, your household, doesn't dishonor someone else's uh, household, and more important, importantly, it doesn't dishonor God. I know with my children, my children got upset that I didn't let them... Um, get into the uh, Halloween activity that came up every single year. <laughs> and as parents, we all had to deal with that. And they like, why not? All the other children get a chance to do it. And not this household. <laughs> We're not doing that. But as they got older, and they start doing the same thing with their children. The same thing they complained about, they start doing the exact same thing uh, with their children. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure anyone else, uh, you guys had the same exact things. Uh, we all going through that. <laughs> um, C, under controlling a child can provoke a child. It should be noted that this is the most prevalent problem 
in an industrialized society, there is a tendency for those with plenty or with wealth to pamper, indulge, and give a child everything imaginable, well beyond what a child needs and what is really best for him. Um, parents pamper and adult children for five reasons. Um, I'm going to get my, <laughs> my own reason. Uh, if anybody have a reason before we go on, I know my reason. Um, I grew up poor. I grew up in Camden. I had very little. Uh, I went without eating sometimes. And I wanted to make sure that my kids had a nice place. They weren't in the hood. Uh, they didn't have to worry about the electricity being turned off and, and all the things that came with, you know, living in the hood and, and, the, and the things I saw. I didn't want my children to grow up that way. Um, so they had everything. They never had a birthday without a present. They never had a Christmas without a present. Um, so I made sure they got those things. Um, but along the way, I could see how it pampered them. Uh, and and started to change their mindset, and and I had to get on one of them especially, <laughs> uh, and and um, you know that didn't go well for him uh, that day, and um, you know he reminded me well you know it was your fault you you spoiled us, <laughs> you know, and I just I lost it at that point, and I, I went a little berserk that day, um, and. Um, and he was he was right, you know. As time went on, I had to realize, okay, you know, I did go a little little far and 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 taking care of him. Anyone else? Uh, that was my pamper story. <laughs> Anybody else? Yes, brother Lou. You're muted. Uh, yeah, um, mine uh, for up for me, it was uh, because. Lisa, my wife, she grew up uh, single family, single mother, and uh, she never had a lot. She uh, she was, you know, she had a hard hard life uh, at some points, and uh, mm -hmm. and I know as as you know we we've been together since we we're twelve years old, and as you know, time went on when I moved from the area from where she lived and where I lived. I used to ride my bike over there and I, you know, bring her clothes back to my house, wash them, take them back to her. I would uh, I thought I was being slick. I would steal food out of my refrigerator from my parents to take to her because she didn't always have food in the house. So, you know, and then as we got older, you know, I wanted to take care of her and I never wanted my kids to suffer that way. So that was my pampering for her, for her and for my kids. So that's my story. Amen. Amen. Lou the pamperer. <laughs> <laughs> God bless you, Lou. God bless you. All right, go ahead, Elder Kenny. <laughs> I, I can just attest with you. Um, I know myself uh, growing up a certain way. That was uh, my goal and uh, mother uh, as well at the time was that we wanted them uh, to have all the things that we didn't have. Amen. And we was going to whatever it took to make sure that we got it to them, we did it. So I can honestly say my three kids were spoiled. Um, and it, it had some effects on them as they got older. Um, but also we, we stipulated this one thing. Um, is that, okay, now we were able to uh, rise above our apartment and move into a single family home. Now you guys should be rising above us, get an education, go to college, do something better, get a house, you know, a car or whatever it may be. That was our goal. And we always, and still to this day, we tell them, hey amen, that we want you guys to do better than us. We were putting you in position to be do better than us, hey amen. Previous generation, we want your generation to do better. Um, and now another thing, quickly, is that uh, grandkids are a special uh, situation. Amen. And uh, 
they can look at you a certain way, brother, and, and it had their way. Um, after you done told them no three times, and then that fourth time, you still, you know, and, and the parents looking at us like, that would never happen with me. How can the grandkid get this? So they got there, especially with the grandkids. Amen. Oh, man. <laughs> Very good, Elder Kenny. I forgot about that one. You are 100% correct. 100% correct. Uh, uh, Senior Pastor? <laughs> yes. Um, I was thinking about a comment that uh, Sister Ricky had mentioned about uh, her brother that was the baby, you know, and um, my twin sister and myself were the youngest of all the kids, and they said we got away with murder. But I do know the one thing that I I enjoyed coming up as a kid, especially when school was closed. We could sleep as late as we want to, pretty much in the summer. So when we had our children, you know, and and I, I was used to wanting the kids to sleep a little later. They don't have to get up. So Joe had we had a garden out in the backyard. But Joe said, "Uh, uh, no, they're getting up at five, five o'clock or five thirty or whatever to work the garden." Or, especially in the summertime. I used to get so annoyed because, oh, this is the summertime. They could, she baby to sleep a little later. And, and, but he was strict. No. Another thing that some parents do, they'll, they'll be harder on the son than they are on the daughter because they want to instill, you know, I guess, raise the boy to be I guess stronger to be that leader, but sometimes you can you can go overboard and trying to discipline the the boy than the girl, and and allowing because I mean I, I, I did experience that because I know one time I had to say to overseer, especially when Harold's around seventeen years old, he's about a senior in high school. I said you you breaking his spirit, you know, and sometimes there was a limit. You know, and that to me that could cause a child to to be provoked, you know, because of the harshness. Well, he's a boy, he needs it, you know, da 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 But he listened to me, so he he did he did, you know, back off and it made a difference. And he apologized to his son too about his how hard he was on him. But those things do happen because a lot of times men will raise the girls a little differently than they do the boys or they have more discipline a heavier discipline on the boys and yet you know he was not a trouble kid he, he didn't give us any trouble <laughs> mm -hmm. and his <laughs> yeah yep amen pastor amen and i know sometimes um you know as a father um in the generations that we see today with the gender and, and all this stuff, men tend to, you know, they want to make sure that their sons are tough and they want to make sure that they're good, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, and um, we can be harder. And you're right, we can be harder on, on a young man. And I'd never forget uh, someone had mentioned that his father, he was, his father was so hard on him. He said his father never hugged him in all of his life. And he wanted to make sure that when he did have a son, um, that he took the time to hug his son because his father never hugged him and never said, I love you. And as he got older um, and he asked his father about that, his father said he wanted to make sure he was tough. Um, right. So you're right, uh, Pastor. Um, as men, we are unfortunately guilty of, uh, of that. We definitely are. Of being too... one... Yes, Go Pastor. Ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, Complete your thought. I'm sorry. No, I, I'm done, Pastor. That was that was it. Yeah, the one thing I can say though, Harold will always, you know, give his dad the credit for giving him the work ethic, because you know, even though it was hard then, in in retrospect, he says, "Oh no, my dad taught me the work ethic." So he would brag about what his dad taught him, you know, as far mm. as being that worker, because he was he's showing sure up a worker. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, look how many young men are coming up today without fathers and yeah. uh, looking for other means of, of making money um, uh, rather than, um, you know, getting a nine to five, whatever it may be, and working hard. 
And again, yeah. it goes along with the scripture. You know, the child doesn't know he didn't come up in church, so he doesn't know that a, a person that gains money quickly is is quick to lose it. And a man that that gains it over a long period of time is quick. I mean, is is you know apt to hold on to it. You know, and um, it, it's sad. You know, with children without fathers. Yes, I'll take a strict father over no father. You know, any day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyone else? Yes, Sister Ricky. Just that that last comment you just made about um, getting things quick versus t having the time or having to earn them. Uh, I do remember when we were a little older and my mom was single, There, the things that we wanted, like that everybody else had, we tended to get them a little late, but she did always try to get them. Like, let's say when Atari, the 2600 was out and everybody had one and we didn't have one. And uh, she waited till like we got out of school, made sure our grades were good at the end of the school year. And I remember this distinctly one day telling, oh, I forgot a bag in my trunk of my car, go get it. And it was that. And <laughs> we were bananas. <laughs> Amen. over being that she did end up getting it for us. So we didn't always have everything first, but then we appreciated the things that we did get so much more that she, you know, saved and scrimped here and there to get us those things. And then personally myself with then having Olivia is that I didn't want her to feel any lack kind of you know, mm. like, um, and she really, really didn't till she got to high school because um, she, she went to private school. She went to Christian school. Um, and when she got to high school, there was more of a mix of kids, more affluent neighborhoods and different things, two parents and things like that. And I'll never forget, she came home one day and was like, mommy, <laughs> you know, ask me like, what's going on? And so I was like, you didn't know? And she's like, no. And I was like, well, then the Lord did a good job. <laughs> you didn't know that you had any lack <laughs> this whole time. And she wow. still didn't. She, she was kind of like end up being um, like, you, this is pertaining to overindulging in your kids and stuff. But she really was like at Christmas and stuff. Like some kids have these ridiculous lists and things like that. And she kind of just came up where, no, you get me things all the time or when I need them or whatever, you take care of me all the time. There's nothing that I have to have like right now that you're not going to eventually get if I needed it. So in that way, the Lord covered us so much that he made provisions all the time, you know? So uh, we didn't like, I didn't feel like I overdid now from the outside. People would think that I did um, sometimes I remember somebody tell me, oh, you dress her so nice or this and that. And I'm like, what well, is she supposed to look nice? But in the, like, like in that situation, it seemed like there wasn't a lack. And so that's just the way that was. So that was uh, all in the Lord's hand, I'll say. But um, it's whose perspective that you're looking at it from. Right, right. Amen. And uh, thank you for that, Sister Ricky. And and, you know, we, we remember that we all are children, you know, and for those that still have parents, which, you know, this is also talking about, we see how the word of God um, explains the parent side as well as the uh, child side and how we all are under the authority of our Lord and Savior. And when you combine the parents and the children in the word of God, um, how well it, it works, even if you veer off a little, um, that child is going to come back, um, and which happened for me. Um, I veered off, and and I, but yet I always still remember Christ and, and came back. But the importance of, of parents and children together, the way God designed it, um, is, is, is so great, and how the child is supposed to honor uh, their parents and look back as as you as me, you mentioned, uh, senior pastor has mentioned Elder Kenny, um, uh, brother Lou and, and everyone here can attest 
uh, regardless of the lack that we may have had, we all can look back, because uh, I know I've done it. I, I look back and I and I look back on Camden and how poor I was. Then I realized how rich I was uh, through Christ. And, and I thank Christ for my mother. And, and I wouldn't change a single thing the way I, I came up because I realized that God had my back. He had all our backs. Uh, no matter what we went through in life, he always had our back. And I'm, I'm thankful that we all can look back and thank Christ uh, for the blessings along the way. Amen. Uh, I'm going to pause there uh, due to lack of time and ask if there's anyone else that um, everything that we have read, if they had a comment on it, anything that may have touched you, the scriptures, um, any other uh, responses for what we uh, read through tonight? If none, uh, I'm gonna turn it over to uh, Senior Pastor Emma Jean Ingram. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Amen. Good lesson. <laughs> I, you know, I was thinking as as we were talking, I was reminiscing, and my father, when we were coming up. He always made sure that when we had a meal, we had a, a starch, a green, and a meat. Mm. And that's the way I was raised. He made sure we always had a starch. And then, <laughs> come to find out, different ones would move from North Carolina into Richmond. And they were all living one house together. But what they were cooking for dinner and, and they were saving their monies to buy properties. Where we were getting having the three course meals, they were just cooking a pot of cabbage or a pot of beans. That was their meal. But next thing you knew, they were buying a property left and right because they knew how to handle wow. and eat less, you know, because food is costly, you know. And uh, but that was the one thing I remember as a child. We, we ate so well. And my dad made sure we ate well. And and I made sure that my children ate well. I mean, Joe was a provider. I mean, he was a top-notch provider. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we just thank God, you know, for what he allowed us to experience. But you had made a comment about uh, babies dying at a young age and and sometimes he, people are wondering why with God omniscience and knowing their future, perhaps that child would have lived and died and went to hell. But mm -hmm. as a baby, you know where they are. Such is the kingdom of, of heaven, of God. So it's a good lesson and we, we have to learn from it. Um, I mean, I could tell some stories. I mean, I could tell some stories. And when you do not honor your parents, your life is cut short. You know, I had a brother that did not honor his mother and father. Mm -hmm. um, and at the age of 33, he was gone at the age of 33. And I'll never forget it. My father was just, just overtaken, you know, by his death. But because of his problem and his situation, I mean, the Bible was being fulfilled. So we need to honor our parents that we can have long life. And if, if, if my life is contingent on how I honored and respected and obeyed my parents, I should live to 120. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, my goodness. Because I definitely, you know, respected them, honored them. And uh, so, good lesson. Amen, Pastor. Uh, thank you for honoring us with your presence on that testimony that you gave us this evening. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm pretty sure everyone else enjoyed that testimony. And I hope you... Um, <laughs> you're able to come back next week and pamper <laughs> us with some more of them stories. <laughs> Amen. It's the things that, and I think it was mentioned earlier, you know, um, about the elders and how 
you can glean off of you know the older people and just to hear those stories. What a blessing uh, to hear them. And I know you can go on and on, um, but I, I, I can't wait to hear more next week. <laughs> um, and uh, and, I, and what you were saying, Pastor, you know, uh, whether they're children or they're old, um, I just want to give this um, Romans 10 and 13, um, because whether it's short or long, I want to give everybody the opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to say this prayer and to be saved. And I pray that for those that are out there um, in social media and, and, and may, um, you know, watch this video, I pray the Lord will, will touch their heart. So if there's anyone out there, if you call on the name of the Lord, God said you shall be saved. Every, every person that calls on the name, and because he, he died for all of us, if you just repeat after me, Dear God, I come before you today with a humble heart and surrender my life to you. I believe that Jesus Christ was born free of sin and died on the cross as a payment for my own sin and rose three days later. I believe in your gift of salvation and eternal life because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. God, today I repent and turn from my old way of life because of your mercy and grace, I can have a childlike faith. Today, I ask for a new life through, through you, Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you, God, for forgiving me and making me brand new. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. So if you repeated those words, you too are saved, and not only are we rejoicing, but the angels in heaven are rejoicing also. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now I turn you over to uh, Elder Kenny uh, for the next things to come for the uh, remaining of the week. Amen. Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin. And I uh, have, have to share this uh, as I bring up the slide. Uh, to this day, still, uh, Pastor, I, I eat that way uh, of a meat, starch, and vegetable. Uh, I'm sure it was passed down to to uh, to uh, BD, and it's passed down to our family. And to this day, all three of my kids do the same thing, a uh, meat, starch, and a vegetable at their oh. meals. Amen. It's still today, I still even tell Ricky, can tell you, I got to have meat, starch, and a vegetable. To this day, I still have that repetitive how I eat. Um, because that's when I got here some 30 years ago. I got to taste and experience some great cooking at your house. And <laughs> I never forget that food at, at your house because that was some great eating there. Amen. Um, and I got to experience that meal. Amen. Our announcements uh, for this week coming um, on tomorrow is our Time of Restoration radio broadcast on uh, WTMR radio. Uh, dot com, 800 AM radio, rcfchurch.org, Apple Podcasts, um, th every Thursday, 10 AM and 8 PM is our time of restoration radio broadcast. Senior pastor is teaching a lesson on Speak Life, uh, where she's teaching us um, how to uh, our words matter, how we speak, amen, and um, go about um, speaking life and not death, amen. And we know that life and death is in the power of the tongue, and it's important for us to speak life and not death, amen. So she's uh, up to part seven. Uh, you can tune in tomorrow morning live on WTMRradio.com, um, 800 a.m. radio on the radio dial uh, at 10 a.m., 8 p.m. Also, rcfchurch.org. It'll be posted at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and on our Apple Podcasts, um, it'll be there as well at, starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Uh, also, this coming week is our um, evangelistic service. I pray that we. Uh, this is the last day of the fast that uh, many have prayed and fasted and believe in God for a great outcome with our evangelistic service this Friday night, uh, April 19th at 7 p.m. Uh, speaker will be uh, Apostle uh, Curtis. Uh, Thalia Curtis will be speaking at night. So we're looking for an awesome night um, this coming Friday night at 7 p.m. Our evangelistic service. Uh, 
pray and just believe God for miracles to happen and lives to be changed uh, during that service on this coming Friday night. Also, on uh, April 28th at 10 a.m. at our morning service is Founders Day celebration, 38 years of ministry. We all can give God a big hand praise and a shout for an awesome job of uh, our overseer and pastor laying the foundation for Restoration Christian Fellowship Church. In 38 years, we'll be celebrating uh, April 28th at 10 a.m. Overseer Wayne Howard and True Spirit Ministries will be here with us. Uh, so we look forward to another great service on that day as well. Amen. Uh, ways that you can be a blessing to restoration if you would like to give to restoration. Just as good soul that um, that restoration is, is, uh, is there is no abuse with your money. Your money goes to giving and being a blessing to the kingdom of God. If you would like to give to restoration, you can go to our cash app, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ, dollar symbol RCF Church SJ. Also, you can go to our website, uh, RCF Church, rcfchurch.org. Click the giving tab. Um, and you can give that way as well. Amen. And I always put up this scripture, uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. Every man according, amen, uh, as he's purpose in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Amen. Ways that you can um, get information about our church, Restoration Christian Fellowship Church, you can go to rcfchurch.org. Uh, all our information, doctrine, what our beliefs are, information about the church, establishment of the church, hours and uh, ministries are all there on rcfchurch.org. If you'd like to catch up on any of uh, our videos, both morning service and preach word, you can go to YouTube channel, RCF Church SJ, RCF Church SJ for YouTube. Facebook is RCF uh, CSJ, RCF CSJ on our Facebook account. Um, you can uh, catch up with any of the messages. Also, um, we got to do this a little bit more often. Please like or subscribe to the messages and the, the services. If you do get an opportunity, um, it lets us know that you're you're watching, you're listening. Um, and if, even if you have a comment, uh, how we can even do it better, you can type that in as well. Because we are about kingdom building, and we're not about making money, but we're about saving lives here at Restoration. If you want to visit us in person, you can go to 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. 403 Andrews Road, Sickleville, New Jersey, 08081. Amen. Uh, thank you, Deacon Kevin. That's all the announcements I have for tonight. Amen. Amen. Um, if, I'm not sure if there's any other, uh, I should have asked earlier, but if anyone needed a prayer for anything, uh, but Sister Stewart is going to close out in prayer. Uh, but if you need prayer, just uh, blurt it out real quick for anything. Go ahead, Sister Stewart. Good evening, everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Deacon Kevin. <laughs> can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before your presence, oh God. We thank you for this lesson that we have learned in Ephesians 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. So, Father God, we just thank you for the word. We thank you for the teacher of the night, um, for his due diligence in teaching us the word and bringing out the different points, God. We just thank you for um, his study. We thank you, God, for our pastor on today being with us, oh God, our founder, Lord, we just thank you for her tenacity, for her wisdom, Father God. We're coming today, God, to just thank you that you want us to be continue to be sober, to be vigilant in every area of our life as how we raise our children. And the beautiful thing is that we're always learning, and it doesn't matter how old your children are, you still can input input into their lives to make changes. So God, we thank you for your word on today, that your word is a sure foundation. Oh, Father God, and we just thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We're lifting up our country on today, Father God. We're praying for the peace of Israel, Father God. We're praying for our political situations, God, in this of the United States, God. We're praying for all of those, the homeless, the sick, the shut-in, Father God. We're asking, oh God, that you would just move by your power, Lord. We're praying also, Father God, for um, I lost my train of thought, um, for, just for your goodness, Father, and for prayer. We thank you, God, for the ability to come before your presence to bombard heaven um, for the needs of your people. We're lifting up our sick and shutting on today, those who are on our prayer list, Father God. You know each name 
uh, each person by name and their situation, Lord. And we count it as done, Father God. We just believe your word, oh God. We thank you for your healing powers. We're praying for our evangelistic service on the 19th day, God, that you'll just move by your power. We're praying for souls. We're praying for them to come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And Father, we're praying for increase as um, our deacon prayed on Sunday, not just for increase in our personal lives and personal finances, but the increase to be uh, more in tune to the spirit. And we shared that this morning on our, our morning prayer, that we need to pray more, to be more intuitive to the Holy Spirit, to allow him to guide us and to work with us. So we just thank you for um, the sensitivity of our pastor to, to perceive and to spirit the things that need to be done. And Lord, so we just give you the glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. We thank you for each person that's on the line today, each home that is represented. Father God, we ask that you would just move by your power and your spirit in terms of what they may need. We thank you for the word that is being taken in to give us instruction to change our lives, Lord, uh, that we may be uh, better Christians, uh, better parents, uh, just better, you know, to represent you the most, Father God. That is our purpose, is to represent you and to be a living epistle. So, Father, we just thank you, Lord. So we're going to close with Jude. It says, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. 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 Uh, amen. All right. Uh, this closes out uh, Wednesday right. Bible study. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sister uh, Stewart. Um, and thank everyone for this Wednesday night Bible study um, as we close this one out. And then next week, um, we're going to get into a little bit more of the pampering. I know we went down memory lane. I enjoyed it, though. <laughs> <laughs> God bless everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>